Hi there. Okay, now this lot's training tips or information is going to be about counter hitting. Now, a lot of people when they're training with me and we do some boxing to test various bits and pieces, um, quite often hear the phrase counter striking, counter hitting, and it's what myself is accused of, and of course many other people. I wanted to give you my take on counter striking, counter hitting, or being a counter puncher. Now we hear the phrase a lot within boxing, and it's normally given to people who are considered to be fairly defensive in the way they fight, and that somebody else has initiated the attack, and then you're doing something to counter it, hence the term. Well, actually, I don't like the term counter-attacker, or counter-defend, or whatever, counter-puncher. I prefer the term striking at the correct distance, striking at the correct range. For example, if the person you're sparring with or fighting with doesn't understand range, distance and timing as well as you do, they might think that they are in range and start to throw a punch or a combination. That punch or combination, you may well know, will not land because they're out of range. But as they slightly move in to throw their jab, cross, whatever it may be, they're now coming into range where you know you can hit. So it may well be that the other person has thrown a punch first, or initiated some kind of attack first, and in that scenario, in that way of analysing it, I can understand people using the, the phrase counter-attack. But you're not countering an attack as such because you know that the attack is out of range. You know they're out of distance. You know it won't hit. So you can't really call it an attack. But you do know that you're in range. You do know that you've got the correct distance. And you do know that your strike should hit. So even though the other person has started to throw or has indeed thrown a technique first, if it's going to fall short and not land, it doesn't really matter that they've gone first. But if your counter is bum and lands, then that's what really matters. So counter-attacker, counter-puncher, yeah, obviously there are some people who fit within that description, if you like. But I like to make it clear as to what my definition of it is. It's not a counter, it's not a counter striker, not a counter hitter, not a counter puncher. It's striking in the correct range. There's little point, unless it's for feints or setups or other things, but if you're actually trying to hit something, there's little point in throwing a punch or a strike, whatever it may be unless they're in range. You know, if I've got a really good right hand and I know it's going to miss you, all feints and etc. to set up to one side, if I really just want to throw a right hand that's going to land, there is no point in me throwing that right hand if I know it's going to, not going to land. No point. It's a waste of time, waste of energy, and it leaves me open. So I want to make sure that I throw a punch when I'm as sure as I can be that it's going to land. Now, of course, you know, people are moving around, things are happening, so of course you can still miss. Of course you do still miss. But you decrease the chances of missing all the time by making sure that range and distance and understanding of range and distance, not only of yourself, but also of where your opponent is, and there's a whole host of things that make that up. But once you can understand that distance thing, you can understand their reach, 
you can understand if they can actually get to you without diving in. If they're just there, they move the gut to a certain place to form and they start to throw. If you know that they're out of range, but you're in range, it's a, it's a field day. You have a lot of fun with it. And that's a very important part of your training. And you need to understand that, that for sport, if you're a sports person, but very importantly, you need to understand that for self-defense. Because if you've got somebody in your face arguing with you and you've got the right angle on them, you've got, you know your distance, you know where you are, you've got everything ready. If you know that if you throw that right hand, it's in range, you can land it. But you also know the other guy can't land without really jumping in on you. If you as a trained person understand that distance, I'm telling you now, I know from experience and many, many people that I've taught as well will tell you from experience that that guy out on the street, unless he's very well trained as well, but let's assume he's just a knob jockey on the street for a moment, he knows he's too far away to land. So he wants to try to get in on you, get closer, or whatever it may be, to make sure he can land. But you know he's already in your range. So the second, the second, that millisecond rather, that they flinch, move, even look like something's going to go wrong, pop, you can land your punch. So understanding of this range, what can and can't hit you, and what you can and can't hit, is of vital importance. And again, for self-defense, it comes back to that sporting environment, which is why we're doing so much boxing. If, in a self-defense situation, that guy, you know he's out of range, you know he's got to move a lot to land his punch. If he doesn't move a lot and swings it, you know it's not even going to hit you. And you know you're going to make your defense, you're going to move, of course. But what I'm saying is, is that up here, you know it's not going to land. You can then, bang, smack them out. Because you know that you can land. Now, it's disconcerting enough in a sporting context to be throwing punches that are missing and keep getting hit. But out there in a real fight, if you're the idiot starting it, and you're throwing something you're missing and you're getting hit, it's a whole new world. It's a whole new world. Which, you know, sporting content, you don't be taking a punch anyway. But in a sporting context, there's bluffs, bells, flags, whistles, referees. You can take a count. There's all sorts of things to get out of it. In a street fight, it's up to the mercy of the other guy. Or somebody coming to your aid. So if you've got this distance right, it helps with a lot of other things. Mentally, you're prepared. You know you're in range. You know you can hit that guy. And you know he can't hit you. And that's the right place to be mentally. Whether it be sport or more importantly for self-defense. So start testing ranges. Start seeing where you can. There's lots of tips on different DVDs I've got out there that explain all this for you really properly and thoroughly. But once you come back to something I always say, get your feet in the right place and everything else starts to work for you. That's the key. Anyway, hope you enjoyed that. More another time. Thank you.